like a truck from the front, but if you view it from the side, you can see the bed of the truck. And so this was used by a lady, the telephone company of Maryland, and so this is the Ford Model A. So before he was successful with Model T, that was the most famous car ever, and then they eventually started making different models later, which is Model A. Can you guys come down here? You guys can see these two cars on the ends are pretty interesting. They're both electric cars. And so they're both from the late 1970s. This one on the far end is from the Spicer Productions Incorporation, and they use it to transport, transfer film reels throughout location on set. So you can see there's enough trunk space in the back for a large film reel, but it was just used to go on location. This truck, this car right here, I mean, this is an electric car that was made by a man called Bill Greengrass in 1975. He actually decided to make this car because in the 1970s we had a gas crisis in the United States. You could, not, you could only get gas once a week and the lines would go for miles and miles around the block just to line up to get gas. So Bill here got frustrated and he decided to make his alternative use of transportation. So he took a body of a regular car and replaced some parts and used electricity to, and batteries to fuel it. And so you guys notice there's no gas on his license plate and this works pretty well. So obviously we had the ability to use this technology even before the 1970s, but our automotive companies and our gas companies have stopped our development of electric cars until recently where they're now being mass produced. Now if you guys look above your heads here, we have a solar powered race car. This race car was, was, um, invent was made by Maryland University students in 1989. If you're a Maryland University student and you're in an engineering program or something similar, a major similar to that, usually enter into contests each year. My cousin went there and he actually made a concrete canoe a few years ago. But this year they had to enter into a race to, and drive a solar powered race car. So you guys can see the black panels on the outside are used to absorb sunlight to make the car go. So that's their fuel source. And they raised, they were on a race from Florida to Michigan in 1989 and Maryland actually came in third place, which is pretty cool but they can go up to around 68 miles per hour on a sunny day. So it's interesting, these alternative uses of transportation. There it goes, wow. miles an hour? On a sunny day, yeah. All right. Yeah, and you can, once you guys walk over here, you'll receive some pictures of the, how it works for me. I remember seeing this car on television. Now this big truck back here, this is an SP&E packing truck. It's from 1917, and it's one of the first refrigerated um, trucks in Baltimore and it was used by the SK company. And so SK is a Baltimore company. It was founded by these two guys named Schluterberger and Kirtle. Well, those two gentlemen, their names are pretty, are quite a mouthful, so you wouldn't want to name a company after that. So what they did is they took the phonetic spellings of their first letters in their name, so S and K, and that's how they came up with SK. And this company still exists today. If you buy that, guys, you guys are from PG Cats. You might not have gone to an Orioles game before, but if you had a hot dog there, that is an SK hot dog. And same thing, they saw their meats like bacon and sausages as well. This is a large rail, I shot it still crank, and then you can see the crank right here on the top. But it was it's pretty, pretty difficult to get in here. Now this truck right here, this is an Astro van, and is actually supposed to represent the last hundred or so vans produced by the GM company in Baltimore. GM used to have a main factory here, and they used to make vans, but they no longer, no longer is placed here. They do have a GM factory, outside the city maybe by 15, 20 minutes, but they only produce the transmissions today. So you guys can see these, these industries that used to be here, they're constantly moving out into cheaper areas, either outside the city or even outside the country because it doesn't work as well having them here. Now this gas pump has an interesting story. So gas before today, where, they, where you have to go and pump your own gas unless you are from Jersey, Gas used to be pumped by a person, it was their job to come and pump your gas. So of course, when you're buying gas, they weren't sure if you were actually getting your money's worth. So what people decided to do, they wanted a gas pump that could show how much gas you were so, so what they would do is the gas would be pumped into this clear area, and then once it was lowered into your, put into your car, you could see how many gallons you were actually getting. So it was a way of showing exactly how much you were getting. And 